The most important thing to know about Jesus is that he's God. Jesus is the God-man. There's been a tendency in recent years to reduce Jesus to the level of a great teacher or a great prophet or guru. Read much of the Christology of the last 30 or 40 years and you'll find that. There's a hyper-stress on the humanity of Jesus. Now, Jesus is human. That's quite right. But the most important thing to know about him is that he's also divine. The Gospel of John, we hear, in the beginning was the Word. That same Word, by the way, that has made the whole universe, the Word I spoke of earlier, that grounds the intelligibility of the world, that's behind all the science of the world, that same Word, who is God, became flesh in Jesus Christ. Also in John's Gospel, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. And his I am there echoes the I am who I am of Exodus 3.14. When Moses said to God, what's your name? And he says, I am who I am. Jesus echoes that. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the vine. Before Abraham was, I am. Philip says, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus says, have you been with me this long that you still don't know that the one who sees me sees the Father? In John's Gospel, it's explicitly laid out that Jesus is divine. But the same is true in the other Gospels too. But they use a somewhat different symbol system. So we find, for example, Jesus heals the paralyzed man. And he said, my son, your sins are forgiven. And the bystanders say, well, who is this man? Only God can forgive sin, which is precisely the point. Mark is telling us there, this Jesus is God. He also says in the Synoptic Gospels, unless you love me more than your mother and father, more than your very life, you're not worthy of me. Well, that's breathtaking. That's an extraordinary thing to say, isn't it? You might imagine a religious teacher saying, unless you love my teaching more than your mother and father, unless you love God, I can imagine any prophet or guru or teacher saying that. But Jesus says, unless you love me, more than the greatest goods in the world, you're not worthy of me. Who could say that coherently except the one who is himself the highest good? One that I find fascinating is in the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel. Jesus says blithely, You've heard it said, but I say. Well, where have you heard it said? In the Torah. Well, the Torah for a first century Jew, that's the highest authority there is. Because the Torah was seen as the word of God, quite rightly. Who's this Galilean prophet to say, well, you've heard it said there, but I say. Claiming authority even over the Torah. Who could do that except the one who is himself the author of the Torah? That's why we hear that language, we take it for granted. That's breathtaking business. Up and down the Gospels, you hear this affirmation. Also in Paul, of course, the Pauline letters precede the Gospels. They're written somewhere in the decade of the 50s, probably, of the first century. What do you find over and again in Paul? Jesus kurios in his Greek. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. Well, that's code. Paul was Shaul, right? Saul who studied at the feet of Gamaliel, the greatest rabbi of the time. He knew the Old Testament through and through. What's basic in the Old Testament is Adonai, Lord, is a term used exclusively of God. And so when Paul, who knew that tradition back and forth, it was in his bones and his blood, when Paul said, Jesus is Lord, he knew just what he was saying. And he knew how strange and radical it was that this Jesus is God. That's the most important thing that we know about the Lord. And I'd push a little bit further. That's why Jesus compels a choice in the way that no other founder does. Muhammad, to his infinite credit, never claimed to be God. Muhammad said, I'm a messenger. I've received a message from God. Moses, to his infinite credit, never claimed to be divine. Moses had received the law from God and gave it to the people. The Buddha, 
to his infinite credit, never claimed to be divine. What he said was, I found a way. Then there's Jesus, who doesn't say, I found a way. He says, I am the way. How strange that is. He doesn't say, I found a truth. Let me tell you about it. I am the truth. He didn't say, hey, there's this new mode of life that I've discovered. Let me share it with I am the life. Those claims are the unique treasure of Christianity. And therefore, as I said, they compel a choice. Either, as Jesus himself said, either you're with me or you're against me. If Jesus is who he says he is, I must give my whole life to him. He's God. He's the highest good. If he's not who he says he is, he's a bad man. You can find that, by the way, in the apologetic tradition of Catholicism. Out Deus, out malus homo. That means either he's God or he's a bad man, and you've got to decide. Either you gather with me or you scatter. Either you're with me or you're against me. And there is the gospel. The gospel is the good news about this Jesus, and it compels, on the part of those who hear it, a decision, a choice. I think that's the most important thing we know about Jesus.